So I didn't know. Oh, because I, I went round here for three or four years ago. No, maybe more than that. Five or six years ago. Oh yeah, The site we're going to is Breaky Bottom Vineyard, which is just 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 over the top of the hill there, just over the skyline there. We we have been excluded from that access land basically because the the landowner I won't go into this in detail now, but basically because the landowner doesn't like the public <coughs> being around his house, which is in the valley bottom. That's the top and the bottom of it. He doesn't he likes his privacy and he doesn't want us sods going around um, messing up messing it up for him so the, and and unfortunately the local authority so far and um, natural england are colluding with that um, and the idea of this action is that we're going to fence the chalk pit the, the reason why we haven't got access his his hook for excluding us is that is that he has an unfenced chalk pit which is deemed to be a health and safety hazard which indeed in a very low key minor way it is if you really wanted to uh, um, tumble off it you could and you you'd probably break all your bones if you did and he doesn't want it fenced because that provides him with the excuse for getting a restriction order um, excluding us so the idea of this action is actually to provide him with some fencing we're going to fence that chalk pit People are not very sad. Right, do you want do you want these at some um, John, um, John's got a cup of so you'll need that for that. The landowner has made clear that he regards a public right of access to this site as an invasion of his privacy. Indeed, he says it's an invasion and a contravention of his human rights. But if you look down there and look at the farmhouse, you'll see it's a, it's a long, long way from the, even the bottom edge of the access land slope. And the device that he's used to exclude us is the device of saying that he doesn't want to fence this quarry because the fencing that he'd do on here co would constitute an eyesore. <laughs> and yet, as I said, he's just fragmented this site into four separate paddocks and surrounded it with new fencing with this 15,000 quid. How many of us have got that kind of money to waste on this kind of ridiculous folly when all he has to do is put 70 metres of fencing in to allow us to, to reclaim this land. Look, just look at this site down here. I call this farm the most fenced farm on the 80 miles of the South Downs. Look at that, every vine row, every vine row down there is fenced. Every sub paddock, every vine paddock is fenced. He's got perimeter fencing all the way round and shelter belting all the way round. Fences, fences, fences. If you go around the back of the valley there, fences everywhere. The most fenced farm um, uh, on, 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 the south, on, the south, on the South Downs. And that's why we're here. Because, because the council legal officer wants proof that the public use this site before he's prepared to consider acting to use the Mines and Quarries Act powers which they have, in fact duty which they have, to get that, to get that quarry fenced. He says he has no proof that the council actually, that the public actually use that ground. And after all there's a restriction order on this right, so the public no longer have any right to use it. So he's sure that people don't use it. Well we're here to demonstrate to the council that people do use this land. What we, what we need to do then is to try and get uh, the fencing of the chalk pit. I, I mean, it's barely a quarry, is it? It's just a little pit. It's just a little farm pit. Uh, little farm pit. Try and get that fenced so that then it becomes illogical to keep us out. Get the South Downs National Park Authority really understanding the issue because they're new and they need to understand that. And making it clear to Natural England that we think they've been incredibly feeble, that they haven't done their job, they have not defended the public's rights of access.
So there are a few practical tasks there, and I think all the organisations need to work together on this. We've got Ramblers here, Chris Smith from Sussex Ramblers. I'm from Open Spaces. We've got Red Rope, we've got The Land Is Ours, we've got Action for Access, and we've got a lot of people who are just, just here because you believe in it. So we've got a great campaign team already here, and let's get going on the campaign. We've got someone else here of, of equal fame to Kate. Um, Marion Shurd, who, who might not be as well known to some of you, but in fact you could say that the, 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 the land rights movement since the 1980s, that revival of the land rights movement when the left of the Labour Party was still strong, when there was still some, some, some fight in the Labour movement, that revival of the issue of land politics was down to, uh, to, to Marion and her seminal work. And I know she had a tremendous influence on me with her first book, The Theft of the Countryside, Marion, which was 1981, wasn't it? And it was an absolutely brilliant book, to be, which was then followed by a book called this, the land, this land, this, this land, land, this land, which was then followed by a right to Rome, and I won't go on with her, the project she's doing now, but she has been an incredible influence on the land rights movement, and if you go on any countryside management course worth its salt, then somewhere on their book lists they'll have your books, won't they? We fought 130 years long, 130 years we fought since the 1880s for the right to Rome, and we're not going to give up on it now. The earth is a common treasury, and we're all the stewards of it. Yay! The land is ours! Break over breaking button!